Hello and welcome to the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr. Barton, where every week I pick you out a lovely GCSE Maths question that has been exclusively provided for my Diagnostic Questions website by each of the exam boards and we take a look at it. And I always pick questions that have got a little bit of a twist to them, questions that are causing students around the country no end of trouble. And this one, unfortunately, also falls into that group. It's on one of my favorite topics, but students don't seem to be a fan of this topic, straight line graphs. So it's been written by OCR, and it goes a little something like this. If you were to write the equation of this line in the form y equals mx plus c, what is the value of m? Okay, so we've got a straight line graph there. First thing I guess we need to get our head around is what the flipping x m and what the flipping x c. So, Let's have a little think about this, because if you don't know this bit, things aren't looking so good. So what is M? Well, M stands for something very particular. M is the gradient of your line. Now, it's only the gradient of the line if your line is written in the form Y equals MX plus C. It's got to have Y at the start. And it is very simply the number and the sign in front of your X. Okay? And likewise, whilst we're here, what is C? Well, C is the y-intercept. It is where your line crosses the y-axis, but again, only if it is written in the form y equals mx plus c. Right, we've established that. So essentially, this question is saying, what is the value of the gradient? So if we know how to work out the gradient of this line, we're going to be absolutely fine. How do you work out the gradient? Well. There's a few different ways, but I have one way that I really like. Gradient equals, and I write it like this. Now, what is he doing there? I hear you saying. Well, that triangle is my quick way of writing change. So gradient equals how much your y changes divided by how much your x changes. Change in y divided by change in x. So how do we find out how much the y's changed and how much the x has changed? Well, for that, we just need to return to our diagram and we need to draw ourselves a right angle triangle. Now, this right angle triangle can be anywhere along that line. And I'm going to show you in a second that if I drew it somewhere else, I would get the exact same answer. But make life easy for yourself. Make it so that the base of this triangle and the height of this triangle have nice numbers involved. You don't want to be guessing, is that half a square, a quarter of a square or whatever. So can you see here that the base of my triangle I can see is one square. And the height of my triangle, it goes from one up to three. So that's going to be two. So now I know that I've got a triangle that goes across one and it goes up two, okay? And it's a lovely right angle triangle. So my gradient is equal to how much y has changed, well, y has changed by two squares, divided by how much x has changed, well, x has changed by one square. What's two divided by one? Well, last time I checked, it was two. So is that my value of my gradient? Wait a flipping minute, a classic mistake has been made here. Look which way your line is sloping. If your line is sloping downwards, like our line is, from top left to bottom right, then your gradient is negative. If your line is sloping upwards, your gradient is positive. So always have a check of that. So I can see my line slopes down, so my gradient must be negative. So my answer is minus two, not positive two. So the answer to this question is going to be option A. Now, before you start thinking, let's turn off the video, have a cup of tea. We've only had half the fun here. Let's analyze where each of the wrong answers comes from. So why might a student get B? What's B in this question? Well, we talked about it at the start. B is where this line crosses the y-axis. B is actually the y-intercept. It's the value of C at the end. It's where it crosses the y-intercept. And that's quite nice, that, because now we actually know the equation of our line, right? We know our line must be y equals the gradient minus 2x and the y-intercept at the end. So we've now actually, hasn't asked us to do this, but for a little bonus, we've actually got the equation of a line. That's a very important skill in this new GCSE. So you'll end up answering B if you muddle up your y-intercept and your gradient. What about C? Why would you come up with an answer of C2? Well, I nearly come up with two, right? If you forget which way your line's sloping and you think it's got a positive gradient, then you're going to end up with C2. So always check which way your line's sloping. Now, you can do that at the end like I've done or at the start, wherever, but make sure you always have a check. 
And finally, D, where would you get minus 1.5 from? That's a weird answer, right? Well, I reckon, this is my theory here, I reckon minus 1.5 students who answer this, they spot that the line's sloping down, so big tick there, so they've got a negative in. And then they think, all right, I know where it crosses the y-axis, that's C, so maybe M is where it crosses the x-axis, because it's next to the x, that makes sense. Well, where does this line cross the x-axis? It looks like it crosses it at about 1.5. So that could be an option for that. Just before we talk about another wrong answer, let me just try and convince you that it didn't matter where I drew that right angle triangle. Say I drew it a big one going down there and across there. I'd still get the same gradient because my change in Y this time is one, two, three, four units up. And my change in X is one, two units across and four divided by two is still gonna give me two and I'm still gonna get me negative answer because it's me negative gradient. Okay, so I'm still gonna end up with the same answer there. What about alternate answers? What, what other answers might students get? Well, my favorite one is this, minus a half. Why might a student come up with an answer of minus a half? It's a little unlucky, this one, because they've spotted it's a negative gradient, big tick for that, but they've only gone and done change in X divided by change in Y. They've done one on the X, two in the Y, and they spotted it's negative and ended up with negative a half. Look, if you still struggle on straight line graphs, don't worry about it. It's a bit of a nightmare topic. Loads of students struggle with it. Just my first piece of advice, try the rest of this quiz out. It'll really help you isolate exactly where you're going right or where you're going wrong. And then also try the videos and the worksheets and stuff that I've linked to um, on my website. And I'll see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.